Uh, I'm Sophie from the Centre for Applied, uh, Centre for Applied Criminology. Um, I can't take all the credit for this research because I have been working um, in collaboration with Michael Brooks, uh, Mo Rahman at the front here, uh, Elizabeth Yardley and David Wilson, so it's been a, a joint project and feeding back um, from our pilot study really. So this study um, was looking at the, um, basically trying to investigate the public's ability or rather inability to recognise high profile victims and offenders. So this was based on the premise that prominent media coverage would enable members of the public to recognise the perpetrators more often than the victims. However, if they were to recognise the victims, we were predicting that they would, they would likely be a white child. Niels Christie talks a lot, lot about the ideal victim in his work and was theorising that the most likely um, ideal victim will be white female uh, or a young child, physically weak in relation to the perpetrator and often unknown to the perpetrator as well. However, there's been a little empirical research into uh, the impact of, of these characteristics and their newsworthiness and, and whether the ideal victim is represented in the newspaper or not. So our pilot study uses quantitative methods of inquiry. We did a survey with uh, participants in the university and outside of the university and we showed people 20 images of high profile victims and offenders. And we were trying to see whether they could name the offenders, name the victims, if they could tell us anything about the case at all, or what, was it just the case of, you know, they didn't recognise them at all. So to talk about the participants, over the space of two months, we surveyed 103 people, uh, made up of 50 males and 53 females. This was in the university setting, so thank you if anyone did take part in the research. We were kind of cornering people in Edge Cafe and Baker. We also got the permission of McDonald's and Burger King in one stop to um, survey their uh, customers at the time, so we're quite lucky to do that. So we had a real range of people participating in the research. I'm going to show you some of the images now which we showed to the actual participants. So here we've got 10 images, uh, they are the press images that we use, we've just um, put them all in black and white for consistency, and these are the images we showed. So you've got 10 of the perpetrators up here, just give you a little moment to have a look, see if you can recognise these people, this is what we would have done in the research as well. What I'm going to do is just, I won't discuss them all just because of time, but I'm going to go through a couple of them. So, uh, middle bottom, a uh, female offender there, Joanna Dennehy, don't know if that rings any bells. Uh, first British woman sentenced to a whole life tariff by a judge. Um, this was um, the fatal stabbings of three men and attempted murder of two men in 2013. She was only sentenced in, in February 2014, so you know, we were conducting the research between March and April of that time, so she was in the press quite a lot at the time we were doing the research. Actually, only four out of the 103 that we surveyed could remember the name Joanna Dennehy, and 56 didn't even recognise the image. It's quite an iconic image. I mean, when we showed them, we had them like bigger versions than this. And you know, she's got a star tattoo under the eye. She was in the media quite often. Uh, you know, you saw her with a protruding tongue, kind of licking a serrated knife. You saw her, like she had machetes, um, all these kind of images. And it was all going on the month before the survey, but no one really seemed to record who she was. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit briefly about the um, second image on the left, at the top. Uh, we've got Dale Cregan there, who killed two policewomen in Greater Manchester in September 2012 after making a ho hoax emergency call to the police. Um, out of the 103 participants, 66 did not recognise his image at all, and only three could recall the name Dale Cregan in full. Um, which is quite surprising. This is, I, I, I think it's quite a, a recognisable image in, in respect that he's lost his eye, uh, in his left eye, and it's quite a prominent feature in you know, all the close or fa facial um, images that we use in the press. I'm going to go on now to show you the images that we used of the victims um, that we used in the survey. So I'll give you a couple of moments so you can recognise any of those um, faces. In the centre, kind of towards the bottom, with the kind of flat, flat cap on, uh, we've got Lu Lucas Glabowski, um, 31. This is one of Joanna Dennehy's victims. So like I say, his image was in the press quite a lot just prior to the survey being conducted. Um, he was actually lured to her home after a string of text messages um, in March 2003. Um, and nobody could, could recall his name. And 94 didn't even recognise the image itself. Um, top right hand corner, we've got the two female police constables who were killed by Adele Cregan, uh, Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes. 
Um, and, and same again, not one person in our survey uh, recalled the names of those two women. Um, and that and that had happened, you know, in two, uh, two, 2012, and I think the sentencing was 2013. 84% didn't recognise the images at all. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about media coverage. Um, so a key feature in contemporary society is the omnipresence of mass media communication, which is now increasing via social media platforms um, and, you know, via online. Young people are receiving news, crime news, saturated with images of violence and crimes, you know, on a daily basis. But it's also really important to remember that even before the creation of uh, mass media and the development of, like, these online platforms, crimes and punishments of offenders have long been of interest to the general public so you know you know in past times general public and crowds would gather to, to witness e um, executions and those uh, that were being humiliated in stocks or pillories so it's it's not a necessarily a new thing and um, violent crimes such as serial killings spree killings um, as well as um, certain individual murders attract enormous attention from the press um, and their images are constantly put out there. Uh, first of all, there's breaking bulletin, you know, news images, and then we start seeing them in the broadsheets and tabloids. Um, of course, there's too many criminal acts for them all to be reported, um, so the media have to be selective in the ones that they choose um, to, to represent in the media. Um, and some criminal acts are chosen because of their newsworthiness. And we talk about these being kind of mega murders. They've got an oddness, something about them that's different that makes them be reported. Usually a sexual element uh, might, might be in there as well, and they're more likely to be reported. All the cases that were used and that were featured in our sample were widely reported at the time of the murders themselves. They would be considered uh, these mega murders. Um, and the subsequent trials of the perpetrators have continued to make headlines um, ever since um, with some of them you know, having a real impact on criminal justice policies as well. So given the extent um, that we know the media coverage of, of the sample was used, um, there's a re there was a reasonable expectation going into the research that, those who, that, that we'll be using high profile cases and we thought that these would be recognised by, by the public, which didn't happen to be the case. So, just to give you a quick summary of our findings, the most recognised victims were Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman. 49% of participants were able to recall details of this case, um, and 10% and were able to recall their names in full. Of all five victims recognised, they were all under the age of 20. So we had Holly and Jessica Wells, Stephen Lawrence, Millie Dowler, Sarah Payne and Tanya Nicholl. Um, while six of the victims were female and four were male, Four out of uh, four of the five most recognised were all female. This kind of fitted with what we were saying um, in the hypothesis, I guess. Um, and in terms of the perpetrators, um, what we found was with Joanna Danahay and Ian Huntley, they were, people were able to recall the incidents. You know, they were able to recall things that happened in the case, but not necessarily their names in full. This was reversed for Raoul Moat and Rose West. They knew the name, but not necessarily what happened in the case. Um, and of the three most unrecognised perpetrators, Gary Dobson, Derek Bird and uh, Roy Whiting, two of these cases led directly to the high profile service law and into the in uh, looking into the investigation of institutional racism in the police. This has been in the media loads since. So to conclude, despite the fact we're still living in a, you know, we're living in a largely media saturated um, society that's often covering crimes about spree, spree killing, serial murder and high profile incidents. Um, basically, the public's inability to recognise, collect, you know, collectively recognise uh, you know, these faces, it's just not there. They're not recognising these faces. Um, so, you know, basically we found that the public's collective consciousness is very constrained. Um, and obviously this is a pilot study, we had 103 and we'd like to take this further. It is going to be published in the uh, International Journal of Crime, Media and Culture, so you know, myself and Mo are around today, so do come and talk to us about any other, anything else. So I think I'll wrap up there. Thank you.